So we're going to briefly touch on now Bluetooth testing. So there's three types of uh, testing. So as mentioned, we have radio, protocol, and profile. And there's a number of test tools to simulate specific scenarios that your product is likely to experience and to ensure that your products can respond correctly and ensure that you meet the Bluetooth requirements, a Bluetooth specification. I'm going to talk a little bit about the test tools. Uh, the first test tool that I think we really need to talk about is the test plan generator. A test plan generator is a, is a fantastic tool uh, and will save you a huge amount of time. Previously, before the uh, TPG, you would have to go through each specification, each um, protocol, each profile, and determine what test cases that you had to perform. Obviously, if you've got a complex device, like a mobile phone, or a tablet, or a PC that supports a number of profiles and protocols, this is quite a large task to undertake. With the TPG, you can generate a test plan just within a few moments. It's a fantastic tool, and it's definitely the starting place to for your qualification. There's a number of radio performance testers. These are normally developed by test facilities. Uh, they have to be um, validated by the Bluetooth SIG to make sure they meet all the requirements to show that they can exercise uh, devices uh, to make sure that they meet the Bluetooth specifications. There is one primary protocol tester that is uh, developed by AT4 and updated by AT4. This is very expensive to uh, maintain and also to purchase and it's not the easiest tool in the world to use. If you don't have to use it I would highly advise that you don't but if you have to then obviously this is the tool that you'll have to use for protocol testing. However PTS has begun to start incorporate a number of protocols primarily for low energy at the moment but I'm hoping in the future they will develop more protocols to start covering some of the basic rate and media uh, protocols. And then finally, the Profile Tuning Suite, which is the only tool, really, to use for profile testing. It supports the majority of all profiles and is the, the test tool to use to show that your device is compliant for the specific profiles that you support. The key question that we're trying to work towards is, from the test plan generator, is what do I have to test? So each implementation is different depending on what you've incorporated into your product. You can't just say you need to do RF and profile or protocol and RF. Each project is individual and the requirements have to be determined. So there's a couple of common examples uh, that I've come up with. This is the first and probably most common. I'm going to take an example, uh, a Bluetooth headset that you've designed uh, and talking to one of the chip manufacturers. You're using one of their chips. You're using one of their stacks you've incorporated the chip onto your motherboard and because you are trying to save space uh, and make it as small as possible you've changed all the RF parameters that were previously qualified. So the RF requirements would have to be tested again to ensure that you still meet the Bluetooth SIG requirements. Also you'd have to do the profile testing. So you would have a unique interface normally on your Bluetooth headset um, and you would have developed the profile that would sit on top of the components. And because of this, you would have to retest the profiles as well. Occasionally, though, if the mo uh, component is listed as a module, so this is its own, uh, own module that sits on your motherboard with a connector of some sort, and there's no changes from the original listing that, uh, performed by the manufacturer, then you wouldn't have to perform RF testing, and only the profile testing would have to be performed. So the second example, which we're beginning to see more commonly, is the incorporation of subsystems into your product. So there's no qualification requirement. You ensure that it works as expected. Uh, you've incorporated the host subsystems as specified by the manufacturer, and you've met those requirements. There is no qualification requirements if you do it that way. However, when incorporating subsystems into your products, even the smallest change may affect the host or the controller that you didn't expect. And so we would always really highly suggest some verification testing to make sure you're still compliant to the Bluetooth SIG. If, for example, the controller subsystem, so the module that you're using, uh, goes out of date, the manufacturer stops producing it, what happens then? 
Well, you just get another controller subsystem and you incorporate it in your product. And again, you wouldn't have to do any additional qualification testing, but again, we would highly suggest that you do some verification testing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It depends how it's listed. If the manufacturer updated the module with the new firmware and updated the listing, so they may, if there's a number of pitch changes, they would have to do a new qualification. No. Um, sorry. Um, so if the controller, um, so say the controller is out of date, the new controller has a different firmware, uh, different hardware, mm -hmm. I would hope that your manufacturer uh, quantifies that as a controller subsystem again for you. So you can drop that controller subsystem into your product and you wouldn't have to do any additional qualification testing. So the third common example that we're seeing more often is uh, when a manufacturer, if they're particularly new to the Bluetooth qualification, that they combine a host subsystem and a component. Well, currently you can't combine components and subsystems. So we have to be a little bit clever maybe. We can either reassess the host subsystem and ensure that it still meets the requirements of the new qualification, or we can list the component as a subsystem and combine that with the previous subsystem to make up our end product. But this is all dependent on your product uh, and what is the easiest to do really, predominantly. And with that, a number of testing, you know, you may have to do profile, you may have to do protocol. You would have to review everything and ensure that you're compliant to the core specification uh, and do any testing that's necessary. So hopefully you'll have um, compliance with the Bluetooth qualification uh, requirements. Will always be required you may not have to do qualification testing if incorporating subsystems, but you still have to meet the requirements. Your product has to be listed as either a QDL, if it's a unique Bluetooth design, or an EPL if it's a combination of either of subsystems. Some testing may be required. With the subsystems, I would definitely suggest that you do verification testing, but it's not necessary to do qualification. If you're doing a new design, it's more than likely you would have to do some qualification testing. And the aim of all this is peace of mind. And hopefully, you know, if you meet all the requirements, that you can go on to sell your product and not have anything to worry about. Any questions? I do have a question. Uh, are you going to have to do self-tension? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, you know, I think you're down <laughs> Does that mean you're not allowed to release a Bluetooth product that uh, contains references to the technology? Is that using the Bluetooth mark and you still have to go through the qualification? Yes, you would do, yeah. You have to meet the mandatory, minimum mandatory requirements for, uh, to the specific core specification to use any of the... Unfortunately, you're still using the intellectual property of the Bluetooth SIG, so yes, you would still have to meet the requirements. Well, to be precise, this is not so based upon the board of directors. It's not, the Bluetooth SIG does not own any of the intellectual property, it's the other members of the SIG that own the intellectual property. And so, by not being qualified, you're not going to be shipped the product, you're taking a risk that any of the other members who own patents related to it could sue you for infringement. But it's a qualification process. Thank you. <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions? I think there's one at the back. Tim, you're not allowed. <laughs> uh, I'm Jerry from Hyundai Motor Company. Hi. Uh, in the vehicle, uh, all of our module system have to get certificate, Bluetooth certification because we use Bluetooth technology. Mm -hmm. but uh, a few months or a few years later, uh, if there are some, some, nearly some 
minor changes in our audio system uh, unrelated with the Bluetooth. For example, uh, uh, changes register or changes LCO and so on. Then we have to get certification again. Um, it depends on the changes. If they have any impact on the Bluetooth, then we would have to determine uh, what that impact was and um, determine a test plan and decide if there were any additional requirements to be performed. Um, if they are not directly um, changing any of the Bluetooth that's incorporated in your product, there's a high possibility <coughs> you wouldn't have to do any additional qualification testing but we would have to look closely at it. Does that answer your question or do you? <laughs> Thank you. They can, yeah, you're right to a certain extent, but what they would have to do when they do their EPL, they would have to do uh, a subset. So they would have to remove the uh, profiles that they don't support uh, and show this in the SDP record. And the only testing that would be required is the IOPT to make sure that they're advertising the correct profiles that the device supports. So you're testing to verify that the SDP information is correct, right? Yeah. Okay. I have another question. Mm -hmm. You would have to qualify. Bluezy uh, and Android is an open source software, so you can make any changes as you please to it. So each manufacturer who uses Android would have to qualify the stack. Okay. Thank you. okay. Okay, so any more questions? No, Tim, I'm ignoring you. Yours one, your question will be difficult. <laughs> I'll try to stump you. Oh, no. No, you, you mentioned uh, really well about subsystems and that there's no further requirements. But does it require an EPL when you're combining subsystems? Yes, you were required to do an EPL. And that's technically the last qualification requirement. <laughs> you would say. I just kind of wanted to clarify. Okay. That. Well, I'm not going to disagree with you, Tim. <laughs> good choice. <laughs> and good job. Thank you. Okay. So, if you need to, to change the profile settings again, mm -hmm. what's the policy? You could do that then. If you. Um, Bluetooth Seek have developed a tool called the PTS, which is Profile Tuning Suite. So that's all you need, the, just the results from PTS? In, within PTS, what you can do is generate a test report, which you have to upload when going through your, uh, when you're doing your listing. Mm -hmm. And that will show that you're compliant to each specific profile that you support, or, or cover a large percentage of it. Uh, PTS, as I said, covers a large percentage of all profiles that are on the Bluetooth SIG, but it's not quite there. And with a number of new profiles being released, sometimes you would have to find other ways to show that you're compliant. Okay. You don't need to go through the community. You don't have to, no. Okay. okay. I think I don't think we have any more questions now. So, uh, oh no, one more. So it's general cost for the uh, qualified person to qualify for the It it can vary hugely. <laughs> so, uh, as mentioned, if you're combining subsystems, there isn't actually any qualification requirement. 
So it could, wouldn't necessarily have to cost anything. If you're doing a new design for a QDL, then we'd have to determine what test requirements uh, you would have to meet. Um, so it can be, if it's any RF, for example, and profile testing, I'd expect it to be from from our, from the UL, from UK between eight and nine thousand pounds. But it is dependent on your on your specific design, and I'm more than happy to catch up with you afterwards and find out your device and uh, find out and give you some more details about that. Okay. Well, it's not quite time yet, but I don't think we have any further questions and I don't have anything more to say at the moment. So uh, I'd like to thank you for attending and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of Bluetooth World. Thank you very much.